In this video, we're going to talk about unit vectors. Let's start by drawing a vector, and we'll label it A. This vector has a magnitude, which we would label A, and it represents the length of the line, and a direction, which we would label theta. It would be appropriate to talk about this vector A as saying A comma theta, which is sort of like the polar coordinate way of talking about the vector A. Another way of talking about A is by referencing its components. So remember that A will have an x and a y component. Here's ax, here's a y, and these are like um, coordinates except they themselves are their own things that point right and then point up. Okay, so if I wanted to talk about the vector with its components, I would say ax comma a y, which is sort of like the Cartesian uh, way or Cartesian coordinate way of talking about the vector a. Okay, what we're going to learn now is a new notation where we talk about these things in terms of i and j. These are our unit vectors. They're sort of like placeholder vectors that are equal to one. We put i on the x-axis and we label it with, sometimes people do different things, uh, most people will do i with a little caret or arrow above it. So i goes on the x-axis and then j goes on the y. We would label it with the j little arrow, or uh, well I guess you can call it an arrow or caret above it. Now each of these vectors is equal to one and they point in a certain direction. And if we scale them with the magnitudes ax or ay, then we can get um, uh, a component of each x and y for the vector. So that's what we do. We typically say ax times i. Again, that way i has the direction and ax is the, the scalar, the thing that is scaling it. So ax times i plus ay times j. Which again, the unit vector j is, is a vector with a magnitude of 1 and it points in the up direction and then our component a, a y, the magnitude of it, scales that j vector. Basically this is just sort of a shorthand notation that we call unit vector notation that makes it really easy for us to uh, categorize our thinking, organize it, use it in things like matrices and fairly complicated methods down the road. For now it's as simple as saying if your y co uh, component is let's say 5 and your x component is 4 then you could write the vector in unit vector notation by saying 4i plus 5j. So it's kind of just like an organizational tool for us at this point. Let's, let's use it real quick. Draw the vector uh, a equals 3i minus 5j and find its magnitude and direction. Okay, so the vector starts at the origin um, and the 3i is basically just like an x-coordinate. So I go over 1, 2, 3, uh, and the 5j is the y-coordinate. So that actually is negative, though, so you would go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so this is my vector a. And if I find the magnitude, it's simple. I just take um, the x-component, square it, plus the y-component, and square it which is going to give me the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared, or negative 5 squared, but that goes away. So 5.83, we'll round it to 5.8. And the angle is tangent inverse of the y over the x. But again, I would use negative 5 over 3. Um, and that's going to give me, when I do tangent inverse of negative 5, over 3, I get a negative 59.03, so negative 59.0 degrees, and it's in the fourth quadrant, so that angle is correct. The negative just tells me that it is underneath of the x-axis. Okay, great. So this basically was just a new notation for us um, to give us the x and the y coordinates without having to actually say x or y. Okay, let's do some math with unit vector notation. Find the magnitude and direction of a1 plus a2 plus a3. 
Okay, so here what I would do is I would write a1, 2, and 3 in unit vector notation. So here I've got a1 has an x of 1, 2, 3, so I would write 3i, and then a y of 1, 2, 3, 4, so plus 4j. a2 has an x component of 1, 2, 3 to the left, so negative 3 i and then no y component because it doesn't go up at all so you could either say plus zero j or you could just not include it at all then there's a3 a3 has one two positive so two for the i and then one two negative so negative two j for the y Great, so now we've written all the vectors in unit vector notation. Remember, this is unit vector notation. Okay. Now, here's the beauty of unit vector notation. Because you've sort of already organized your x's together and your y's together, then finding the sum of these vectors is as simple as adding together all the i's and then adding together all the j's. So the components 3 minus 3 plus 2 are going to give me plus 5i. Again, we could write a 0 here for j. And if I add together plus 4 plus 0 minus 2, then I get plus 2j. And boom, I now have my sum of these three vectors written in an, an appropriate notation. And I could graph this quickly. If I wanted to graph it, I would say, okay, the x component is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then the y component is positive 2, 1, 2. So that is my sum of these vectors. Finding the magnitude, which would be the length of that line, is very easy. Do the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared. The square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared is 5.38, so we'll say 5.4. Um, and then the angle tangent inverse of the y over the x, so 2 over 5. Tangent inverse of 2 over 5 gives me 21.8. And I check to make sure that it's in the first or the fourth quadrant, which it is in the first quadrant, so that is the correct angle. And boom, you have found the magnitude and direction. Um, again, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to use unit vector notation to do that, I mean. Um, but it is a helpful organizational tool for you to line everything up quickly and then arrive at your answers. We didn't once have to write AX, sigma AX equals or sigma AY equals. Okay, let's do uh, another example. Find the magnitude and direction of 2A1 minus A2 plus 1 half A3. All right, so here's where the genius of unit vector notation is, is really going to thrive. Um, let's, let's write out a1, a2, and a3. a1 is going to be 1i plus 2j. Okay, great. a2 is going to be negative 2i minus 1j. Okay. A3 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, i, negative 1, 2, minus 2j. Okay, now, whatever this thing is, let's just call it the sum of these vectors. Um, and really, what we're going to be doing is we're going to sum 2a1 plus negative a2 plus 1 half a3. <coughs> so it is a sum. We can call it a sum. Sometimes, you know, people call it r for the resultant, whatever. Um, if I'm going to add these things together, then, then what I need to do is I need to just sort of start, and I'll start fresh here, and say, what is 2a1? Well, all I have to do is multiply both components, 1 and 2, by 
this scalar on the outside, too. So I would write 2a1 equals 2i plus 4j. Okay, great. Negative a2, well, if I reverse the x and y components, or the i and j components, then I'm going to get negative a2. Because again, it's almost like multiplying this by negative 1. So positive 2i plus 1j. For a3, if I want to do 1 half of a3, well, I apply the 1 half to the 4 and the 2. And I'll get 2i minus 1j. Okay, well, now I can sum all of the i's and then all of the j's. When I sum all of the i's, I get 2 plus 2 plus 2, or 6i. When I sum all of the j's, I'm going to get 4 plus 1 minus 1, or 4. And boom, here I have the sum that we were asked to find in unit vector notation. Finding the magnitude is easy. Right, well, first let's grab it. 6, 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is our odd sum of these strange scaled uh, vectors. Okay, so let's find its magnitude. To find 6, I'm sorry, to find the magnitude, sigma a, you do the square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared. The square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared is 7.2. And then the angle theta is tangent inverse of the y4 over the x6. Tangent inverse of 4 over 6 is going to be 33.69, so we'll say 33.7. And I check to make sure that my angle is in the first quadrant, which it is, therefore it is a correct angle. And here I have now found the magnitude and direction um, of the sum that I was asked to find. Okay, so notice that you haven't actually learned anything new. Unit vector notation is a notation. And when it comes to some, some more advanced application of unit vectors, it's really helpful. Um, and and you, you kind of need it to make sense of things, especially when we start dealing with um, things that you would want to organize in like a matrix or an array. But for now, it's just a notation. It's just a way for you to write out what a vector is. Um, and it's really succinct. It has, it has few letters. It's really easy to work with. Um, and it's very helpful to be able to see what, what's happening with it. So you're awesome. You are so good at math, and this is going to make you the greatest physics -er person that you've ever known, and I'm so glad you made it to the end of this video. Thanks, and bye-bye.